Good evening, Your Excellencies, African Union groups of the heads of missions in London, distinguished representatives, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the virtual celebration of Africa Day. My name is Juliana Olayinka, and I'm your host tonight for Virtual Africa Day 2021, live from Embassy Media Studios here in London. We have a wonderful event in store for you this evening, but first we begin our programme with the African Union Anthem. Your Excellencies, distinguished representatives, ladies and gentlemen, our theme for this year's Africa Day is the AU Year of Arts, Culture and Heritage, levers for building the Africa that we want. And who can build this Africa? Those of us with a strong cultural identity, common heritage, shared values and ethics. All of us. And what better time than now to call for an African cultural renaissance, which is preeminent and that inculcates the spirit of Pan-Africanism. Tapping Africa's rich heritage and culture to ensure that the creative arts are major contributors to Africa's cultural heritage, including all of our beautiful languages. Your Excellencies, distinguished representatives, ladies and gentlemen, please help me in welcoming our first speaker for the evening, his Excellency, Mr. Estefanos Habtamariam, Ambassador of the State of Eritrea to the United Kingdom and Ireland. His Excellency is also the Dean of the African Union Group of the Heads of Mission in London. You have the floor, sir. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Mr. James Dedridge, Minister for Africa, allow me to thank and express my deep felt gratitude to all of our guests present on behalf of all the heads of the African diplomatic missions here in London, and myself for taking time in honor of our invitation to attend the Africa Day celebration virtually. It's 
at the time, same time, another opportunity to thrive on the bilateral relationship and cooperation between Africa and the United Kingdom. As the largest diplomatic group in London, all our efforts are oriented to the emergence of a robust and diversified partnership between our countries and the United Kingdom. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, Africa Day is the annual commemoration of the founding of the Organization of African Unity, OAU. We celebrate this day and remember the vision of the forefathers and leaders of the first 30 of the 32 free and independent states who signed the founding charter of OAU in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, before 58 years today on May 25, 1963. The rise to independence in the 60s in Africa was after a long process that began with the resistance and armed struggles waged against European colonialism by the heroic peoples of Africa for centuries. It was because of this history that those 30 courageous fathers of Africa enshrined in the OEU Charter the inalienable right of all Africans to control their own destiny, freedom, equality, justice and dignity as an essential objective for the achievement of the legitimate aspirations of their countries and peoples. It is these wise men of Africa, through their vision attested by their signature, to the OAU Charter that committed Africa to harness the natural and human resources of the continent for the total advancement of the peoples of Africa in all spheres of human endeavors. At that time, when African nations were gaining their independence, there was much hope to build strong and independent nations with thriving economies. Indeed, with independence, many African nations inherited the aftermath of the scramble of Africa, which left our rich minerals looted, our people oppressed and pillaged, and our indigenous languages and beliefs suppressed and prohibited. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we are living in a fast-changing times. New challenges are threatening the stability and security of our peoples. A host of problems such as underdevelopment, youth unemployment, poverty, illegal migration, environmental degradations, armed conflicts, terrorism, etc. continue to threaten the development of our continent. Today, we find ourselves in the midst of possibly the worst global crisis of our lifetime, caused by COVID-19, and many lives were lost as a result. As we strive to break away from the curse of poverty, the impact of COVID-19 has adversely affected our economic and development capacity. On this occasion, I want to thank the UK government's financial support to the Global COVAX initiative to fight this pandemic. Undeniably, in unity there lies strength, therefore our unity is paramount to pool our resources together, not only to develop our nations, but to also advance our capacity to emerge as a major continental player on a global scale. We must acknowledge that Africa is rising from the scourge of underdevelopment. The dynamism of the population, its energy and its extraordinary entrepreneurial spirit will be the strongest allies for all those who want to invest in partnership with African countries. Above all, Africa will be the largest market in the world by 2050, with more than 22.5 billion inhabitants. Africa has the largest Arab lands in the world and can feed its people and export large surpluses. Africa has large reserves of strategic minerals essential to the world industry. With shared goals, sustainable solutions can be found collectively and achieved through enhanced partnerships bilaterally and continentally. Hence, we must ensure a robust, strengthened and innovative African Union flourishes and strive to find African solutions for African problems. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we are honored to have a message from the Chairman of African Union, His Excellency President Felix Antoine Shesekedi Shilombo. Finally, it's my sincere wish that it will not be in a distant future 
when we are able to go back to normality and are able to celebrate together in person. Under the theme of African Union of this year, the African Union Year of Arts, Culture and Heritage levers for building the Africa we want, let us draw from and promote our shared yet diverse and rich culture and heritage for better Africa. Long live African Union. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Estefanos Habtamariam, Dean of the African Union Group of the Heads of Mission in London. And now we move swiftly forward to our next speaker. Please allow me to give the floor to His Excellency James Philip Dudridge, Under Secretary for Africa at the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office. Thank you very much. Uh, High Commissioners, uh, Excellencies, Ambassadors, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you for inviting me to celebrate a belated Africa Day with you today. I'm pleased that the African Union are doing so much to highlight uh, culture and heritage this year. It is a great resource for the continent to draw on and celebrate uh, success with. I know this having lived in three African countries and worked in three African countries and visited over 40 African countries over three decades. A few weeks ago, I was fortunate enough to visit uh, Tanzania and Zanzibar. Um, I took in the incredible culture and architecture, uh, which makes it one of the 145 African World Heritage Sites uh, as classified by UNESCO. It was simply beautiful, and I can't wait already uh, to return. A few weeks before that, I was in Nigeria, and I saw the cultural uh, sector there, particularly in uh, Lagos. Um, I saw film producers working with Netflix. I saw fabulous organizations working with technology companies around the world to share Nigerian and African culture. And I was particularly impressed in the UK going back to the African Investment Summit, not only to find the normal commercial activities, but people investing in African art. Um, innovative, avant-garde, off-the-wall art, but sold through uh, studios uh, such as uh, Bonhams, where we visited during the African Investment Summit. But sadly, too many people don't know about the amazing art of Africa, the amazing food, the amazing literature, the dance, the culture, the heritage that all we know about. Um, most people don't know, or lots of people don't know about all the cultural offerings of Africa. And I want us to work together to make sure that there's a better understanding uh, of this and certainly a better understanding in the UK. And that will bring huge benefits, I believe, to the African continent. So as Minister for Africa, I champion growth in Africa, growth that creates jobs um, and helps an aspiring and growing population, uh, which in turn provides them with the services they need. And creative industries can play a massive role Speaking from the UK experience, creative industries have been one of our fastest growing sectors of the economy over the last 10 years, and it accounts for one in 11 jobs in the UK. That's a massive opportunity for the African continent. And there's so much potential for this growth sector in African countries. I believe the links between the UK, both cultural and technology, really, really help this through the rich cultural interactions created in particular by the African diaspora community here. You can see this through the influence uh, on architecture uh, between Africa and the UK. You can see it in London Fashion Week uh, that happens in London every year. You can see it on the high streets with designers following the pioneering path of people like Oswald Boateng. In fact, I saw a delightful jacket uh, embroidered uh, in African uh, print uh, which would look delightful at the dispatch box in the House of Commons. So if anyone knows Oswald Boateng, do tell him I'm up for wearing a little bit of artwork in the House of Commons of his own making. But you can also see this in terms of fusion of music and the other great arts, the great game, football. We see footballers like Mo Salah helping take Liverpool back to the European 
uh, football league right to the top. Uh, we see players being an aspiration to their nations and people growing up in their nations. And football is a great communicator. I will be screaming from the stadium in Cameroon during the African Cup, not just supporting the goal scorers, but supporting those African players that are ambassadors for their country, playing internationally and playing it particularly in the English Premiership League. So there are immediate economic benefits to cultural collaboration for industries and individuals. These are obvious, but there are secondary benefits as well, exposing Africa culture and creativity and talent to the whole world. The UK and I will be an enthusiastic partner going forward, whether that's through the work of the British Council, through education, through universities, through schools, or traditional uh, creative output and atypical creative output. There's much opportunity. So I wish you all well as cultural ambassadors for the continent here in the UK. My friends, happy Africa Day. Thank you, Your Excellency James Philip Dudridge, Under Secretary for Africa at the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office. Your Excellencies, distinguished representatives, Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're all still enjoying our wonderful evening of virtual African celebration as there is still a lot of excitement to get through. But for now, it is an honour to present the pre-recorded message from our keynote speaker. His Excellency Felix Antoine Shikishekedi, President of the Democratic Republic of Congo and the Chairperson of the African Union. Honorable Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs, chers jeunes. Honorable. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear youth, on this day, when we celebrate the creation 58 years ago of our continental organization, the Organization of African Unity, which became the African Union, we feel as Africans a legitimate pride and deep admiration for the Founding Fathers, who, with determination and lucidity, gave shape to this continental architecture, a symbol of a united and strong Africa. Indeed, how can we not salute the relevance of their pan-Africanist vision that led to the creation of the Organization of African Unity on 25th May 1963 in Addis Ababa? The OAU was intended to bring the people of Africa together to face together the challenges that awaited them in the aftermath of decolonization. As the heir to its predecessor, the African Union hardly emerges from nowhere. Its definite affiliation with Pan-Africanism lies fundamentally in the objective of self-determination of the people of Africa. In the light of the countless challenges facing us, this vision, the validity of which is even clearer today, must truly ensure the full participation of the people of Africa in the development and economic integration of the continent. Indeed, with the human potential and natural resources, our states must pull their efforts to meet the major challenges that affect the fate of our peoples, namely education, food security, health, employment, human rights, democratic changeover, the environment, the enhancement of our culture, and the preservation of our heritage and the promotion of scientific research and technological innovation as a spearhead for development. The governance of our state should resolutely take up renewed challenges to stimulate the development of the continent. This is the case for the equitable distribution of national wealth, the fight against corruption and misappropriation of public funds, capital flight, stopping the plundering of natural resources, the revival of post-COVID African economies and the local manufacture of vaccines and other medical products.
Faced with all these challenges, the African Union has equipped itself with a fundamental and inescapable strategic and forward-looking instrument, Agenda 2063, the Africa we want. This instrument, Agenda 2063, constitutes a collective oath in which we, the peoples of Africa, and the diaspora, united in diversity, young and old, men and women, girls and boys, from all strata of society, will take the lead in the development of Africa. We commit ourselves to an integrated, prosperous and peaceful Africa, led by its own citizens and representing a dynamic force on the world stage. We are committed to an Africa where guns are silenced, where women and children are no longer the first victims of violence. In the face of terrorist threats and actions, Africa must pull its resources and move towards the operationalization of the African standby force. We want an Africa that invests first and foremost in its human capital which is mainly made up of young people. An Africa that gives and restores hope to its youth through an efficient and quality education, accessible to the greatest number, boys and girls alike. Finally, we want an Africa that is capable of seizing the opportunities that present themselves on the international scene thanks to the implementation of the institutional reform of the Union, which is continuing at a steady pace. Honorable Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear youth, in this impetus, we must also have the courage to rethink and reweave the cultural and umbilical links broken as a result of the tragedy of history with our brothers and sisters today scattered across the island lands of the Caribbean and the Americas. Together, let us make culture the crucible of transformation, renovation and modernization of our way of life and of the welcome of all the children of the continent, wherever they may be, in fidelity to our common history and to our solid thousand-year-old traditions, in their most decisive resilience and capacity to adapt to the challenges of the present time out of the future that is already upon us. The forthcoming inauguration of the Africa Place will be part of a memorial process in which we will come together to renew in a symbolic gesture our commitment to the unity and the greatness of Africa. This day will be a great cultural moment and therefore a great historical event. I will be deeply pleased to inaugurate this African Place located in the heart of our capital, Kinshasa. I hope that it will become the symbol of our active solidarity with all the brothers and sisters of the continent, the sign of our unshakable faith in the perpetual rebirth of Africa, but also a new commitment to remobilize the pan-African vocation of the Congo. In addition to the Cité de l'Union Africaine, and the Avenue de la Union African, there is now the place de l'Africa to remind us of the primary vocation of our country, that of being the spearhead of the decisive takeoff of the whole of Africa. Long live the African Union, long live the Democratic Republic of Congo. May God bless and protect Africa and the DRC. I thank you. Your Excellencies, distinguished representatives, ladies and gentlemen. The Year of Arts, Culture and Heritage is being celebrated at a time when Africa and the world is still grappling with the devastating effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, which has imposed human, financial and economic costs to the continent.
Although the fallout has been incredibly difficult, the creative and cultural industries in Africa have played a key role in contributing efforts to water prevention and combating the spread of COVID-19. And furthermore, the increased use of technology has created new spaces for the sector to thrive by using digital platforms to promote their goods and services. The pandemic has also provided an opportunity to re-examine the continent's social economic priorities, including the role of cultural workers towards contributing to building stronger and more resilient health and social sectors by promoting equality, inclusion, social cohesion and African Renaissance as inspired by the Ubuntu philosophy. I am because you are, you are because I am. Activities and programs to be implemented under the 2021 theme will prioritize the following. Arts and culture, health, wellness, African languages, history, oral traditions and heritage. And now to our next presentation, I would like to give the floor to Garth Prince, an artist from Namibia who will be singing Happy Africa Day. Tanzania Togo, Tunisia, Happy Africa Day, 
Uganda, Serbia, Happy Africa Day, Zanzibar, Happy Africa Day, Z Zimbabwe, Happy Africa Day, Yelele, 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 Happy Africa Day, Yelele, Yelele, Hey, Happy Africa Day. Did you sing along? <laughs> that was so uplifting. We're now moving on to another uplifting feature by the way of some spectacular footage from a wide variety of African countries. Each country celebrates their cultural heritage by displaying their rich history and unique identity. Algeria Cameroon Congo. plan of President Felix Chisekedi on the Pan-African vision is under the sign of an African Union at the service of our peoples. This plan is first and foremost part of the vision of the African Union's agenda 2063. 
C'est un immense honneur que tous les États africains ont fait à mon pays, la République démocratique du Congo. For Felix Chisekedi, it is from human capital that the African creative genius of tomorrow will spring up capable of providing solutions to the problems of the future. In Africa that we want is also the reconstruction of the memory of the past. The promotion of the historical awareness of Africa. The rehabilitation of its heritage. its archive, its traditions, but also its languages. So, what is the continent of the future? The answer is Africa. Egypt. Eritrea. Eritrea, the land of three seasons in two hours, is ideally situated as a prime tourist destination. The Gulf of Aden, gateway to and from the Swiss Canal, within convenient reach of Europe, Africa, the Middle East and Southeast Asia. It has more than 1,200 kilometers of pristine coastline, two deep water ports and a great variety of historical and archaeological attractions. Within a few hours in Eritrea, one can explore the legacy of Eritrea's historical monasteries and ancient sites, monuments that are reminders of a glorious past that goes back more than three millennia. Nine ethnic groups united as one people offer a hospitality that has to be experienced to be believed and the chance to discover a new dimension in exciting cultural experiences, a glimpse of diversified Africa.
experience a remnant of ancient rainforest, rich in bird life with panoramic views, and take a trip on the century-old railway, which runs through Sanic Hills. At the same time, enjoy the flower bedeck beauty of the clean capital Asmara and the unique architectural mix of the coastal capital of Masawa, where boulevard cafes, elegant and historic buildings reveal a cosmopolitan lifestyle that evokes a sunny Mediterranean ambiance. Eswatini. Visit the kingdom of Eswatini and get lost in the land of your dreams. Experience the country's exclusive attractions, natural heritage, unending adventures and untainted cultural practices going back thousands of years. There is never a dull moment in the kingdom of Eswatini. Ethiopia. Baba, Baba, 
Are you dreaming of escaping? Are you dreaming of authenticity? Are you passionate about enchanting landscapes? Do you want to meet animals in their natural habitat? Only one destination! Gabon! A country with thousands of facets where you can expect exceptional tours that will change you forever! Come! and live the experience of your life. Come and discover a culture rich in its written traditions. Come and create unique memories. Come to Gabon, travel destination. Ghana
Kenya. It is a place of color, deeply rooted culture, and home to a group that still follows a unique traditional lifestyle. Olo Loitikoshi, or the place of zebras, is one of many Maasai villages in Kenya, and it is here that one of the best known symbols of African traditions is created. Handcrafted, intricate beadwork is as much a part of Maasai culture as herding cattle. It's for beauty. Maasai's love to be beautiful, and this is why we make these beads. We also love culture. And as you know, we say, one who leaves their culture is a slave. I'm told beading is done only by women in Maasai culture and has been practiced since before colonial rule. The skill is passed down from generation to generation. Today, the youngest here is just three, while the oldest is in her 80s. Ah, oh, no, I can't imagine a life without beads. I just can't. <laughs> to unlock the meaning behind the beads is to understand the unspoken language of Maasai people. Various pieces are designed exclusively for certain ceremonies. This one, for example, is only for weddings. The colors are also assigned meaning in different villages. Red, for example, is for strength. Green is for the rich earth that feeds their animals, and orange for warmth and hospitality. But in Olo Loitikoshi, the beads serve a bigger purpose. This is our office. In fact, this is how we support our families. Surprisingly, it's young people in Kenya who are the biggest buyers of these traditional adornments, redesigning and embellishing the ancient patterns on, well, anything. The finished products end up distributed to various shops locally and globally. But it is here at the Maasai Market, Kenya's biggest open-air curio shop, that young people get to sample a variety of this beadwork. For celebrity stylist Brian Babu in Nairobi, Maasai jewelry has become synonymous with his work. Here, the tradition and culture attached to the beads is ignored, as he places a piece specifically designed for women on a man. But breaking the rules, Brian says, doesn't mean he doesn't understand the cultural value placed on them. It's a good thing to continuously have your heritage with you as you grow in your art. So it's something that's going to continuously be part of me. That these traditional designs continue to have a place in the modern world is in part through young contemporary artists like Brian. But even with no one else to buy or wear them, these Maasai women assure me that they would still be designing and handcrafting their jewelry. The practice, they say, is part of who they are. Liberia.
Madagascar Malawi Chimalanda, 
Mauritius Context of performance, including generally the fire used to hit Ravan, is also one of the elements forming integral part of Sigatipi. It was performed in various contexts, and consequently, there are various forms of traditional Sega according to the context and occasion of performance. Nous 
Morocco. Mozambique Thank <laughs> you. 
Namibia Nigeria The Nigeria High Commission in the United Kingdom celebrates Africa Day 2021 with our brothers and sisters across the continent.
goes to... Burna Boy! Davido, Nigeria! And the winner of the Best Mobile Award for Best African Act... Wiz Kid! And the Grammy goes to... Twice as tall, Burna Boy. Rwanda Nyanyeri Inyanyeri zikunda kwa kabakoka wakulira kuona wahungu wa kwanu siye chirenga Yeena wakwiri Ya mai nganyira magana Rainyaga kuri mudenda Rikwisha funarugara Vichini hiraka muzinza Rimuviro na njire Nebureje ya bonifasi Kanyarugari na china Senegal Samaganyangi Domo Africa Mbola Kami Yaga 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 Dinadani Chige Ukendu Koja Mnani Nena La Samaganyangi Ala Sondure Bifinyo Mamba Yivon Diko Yura Fertinyo Ranyivon the family did you buy you soon you yon but I ask I know all of you mom who turn the good house above again you are looking at all for African if you're the 
ce que nous sommes. Oh, oh, oh. Il y a des trafiquants, je suis. Je suis africain, donc je suis. Mes ancêtres ont souffert le martyr pour que je puisse relever le défi. Seashells. Seychelles has developed greatly socially, economically and culturally through different phases. The colonists tried to adapt to the local conditions, making use of the materials found at their disposition alongside the slaves who worked for them. This explains the large French and African influences that can be found in our architecture, customs, language and cuisine even to this day. As colonization began to intensify, cultivation systems began to develop and plantations were formed. These were large properties with one main house called the Garcaz in the center and with smaller dependent structures around it such as the kitchen, canteen, mill, shop and garden. Paintings of the Seychelles often represent the local landscape, so rich and plentiful on the islands. They also have local everyday scenes, such as fishermen and the Victoria Market. Mediums often used range from oil to watercolor, pastels, and even charcoal. Sculptures are made usually from local wood, but also from stone, clay, and cardboard.
The Seychelles cuisine is a combination of savory ingredients which have been introduced and harvested over time through evolution with new cultures and new cooking styles such as Indians, Chinese, African and French. These recipes have really helped to create the atypical style of cuisine which really portrays the diverse ethnicity of these islands. Mainly based around fish and white rice, these dishes are usually accompanied by salads, lentils and chutneys. Spices such as cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, cumin, coriander and ginger also play a vital role in enhancing the flavor of the dishes. It's also tradition to always add a little bit of fresh chili. Sierra Leone South Africa We want this country to be open to anyone. Good evening, welcome. What I love most about being a guide, I get to share about the beauty of my country. I always wanted to be a storyteller, I always wanted to talk about my community to the world. Being South Africa to me means pride religion, culture, and everything, we are very rich. For me, paradise isn't overseas, it's over here. 
incredible panoramic vistas, deep valleys of indigenous forests. First time I came here, it just blew my mind. I don't think that anybody should be thinking about coming. It's a question of, you know, decide when. Meet, 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 meet my South Africa. <laughs> South Sudan. Sudan
Tunisia. We're the Family Travel Collective and we're spending a sunny few days here in Tunisia in North Africa, just three hours from London. Greta, Ting and I are in Tunis, the capital, exploring the city and the surrounding areas for a weekend break. You can see this, in fact you have to see this, the distinct blue and white colours that Sidi Bisai is famous for and it's hot from Tunis. Carthage was one of the most important cities in the Roman Empire and it's a really easy trip today just outside of the main centre of Tunis and it is so atmospheric. You can taste this, traditional food from Greek to couscous. Bambaluni in Sidi Busayas. Don't just do the touristy things. Find some locals, see where they hang out, and join them for coffee. Tunisia produces 40 million bottles of wine a year, and you can come to a vineyard and taste it. Cheers! You can do this. Don't go home without getting a feel for Tunisian culture. This is the Tunis Medina, the old part of the city. We're here to explore the soups and buy some handmade souvenirs. So I didn't really know what to expect, but it was a really great experience. Yeah, my skin feels amazing. I've been scrubbed so clean, I think I squeak. Uganda. Uganda, a delightful place with its welcoming people, diverse cultures, an agreeable warm climate, majestic features, and wildlife. Over the years, Uganda has hosted a number of international conferences and events, including the Commonwealth Heads of Government Meeting Chogam, the African Union Summit, the United Nations Solidarity Summit on Refugees, the Organization of Islamic Conference or IC, and the Papal Visit, among others. Visitors arrive into Uganda at Entebbe International Airport. The airport has been expanded to handle the growing number of passengers with flights to and from more than 14 destinations worldwide. A four-lane dual carriage expressway leads you right into the heart of Uganda, into the metropolitan city of Kampala. The National Referral Hospital at Molago ensures availability of super-specialized services. Uganda's hotels are now fully equipped to cater to the needs of every delegate on that all-important conference.
the splendor, variety in the profusion of brilliant and first life and scale awaits you. Uganda welcomes you. Zambia. Zimbabwe. What's your wonder? Is it people? In all their beauty and diversity? In all their hospitality and charm? Or is it people's heritage you wonder at? The noble mystery of a past which, in its grandeur and ingenuity, points to the enduring possibilities of people's future. Or is it the breathtaking diversity of natural landscapes that provokes your particular wonderment? How hills, roll into valleys.
transfixed by the beauty of wildlife. As it runs, flies, swims, and thrives. As it connects you with the primal echo of your own animal nature. Or maybe it's not even the diversity of things that grips you. But the power of that one unique wonder, which in all the world is without parallel. Whose beauty calls you back again and again and again. leaves you in awe. What is your wonder? Whatever it is, we have it here. Visit Zimbabwe, a world of wonders. Wow, 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 what a beautiful Africa, the year of the arts, culture and heritage. It is this delightful variety that has been reflected in this magnificent footage. Thank you so much. I must admit the Nigerian video did tickle my fancy a little bit and like most of our viewers tonight, unfortunately I'm not in Africa, I'm in London, but I've got to give a huge thanks to Yared and his team here at Embassy Media Studios in the Eritrean Embassy in London. They have made my set look absolutely beautiful. I'm sure you can see the Nigerian Ankara on the floor here, along with some beautiful pieces from Morocco. We've got some beautiful pieces here from Eritrea and East Africa. And of course, beautiful African cloth. Thank you all so much. We are slowly coming to the end of the evening. I would like to invite the chair of the Social Committee of the African Union Group, Her Excellency, Linda Scott, the Namibian High Commissioner to the United Kingdom and Northern Ireland. She'll be saying a few words. <laughs> Thank you, Juliana. It's been a lovely evening. The African Union declared the year 2021 as the AU Year of the Arts, Culture and Heritage. Leave us for building the Africa we want. So why is it important for Africa in the broader context of the Agenda 2063, which lays out the long-term view for the development of the continent, to focus on culture? Well, growing up under apartheid and colonialism, I did not have the privilege of seeing any of our traditional ethnic dancing on television. This changed the month before our independence and I was blown away by the diversity in my own country, Namibia. The biggest display of the variety of cultures I've ever experienced was in Nigeria, where there are over 600 languages. It is this wonderful variety that's been reflected here this evening in the videos shared and in the statements by our speakers. Allow me to offer the thanks of the Social Committee to the countries that shared 
the videos with us. Thanks also to our Dean of the African Union Group of Heads of Mission in London. Our special thanks go to the Honourable James Dudridge, Under Secretary of State for Africa of the FCDO, for his remarks. We are grateful, Honourable Minister, that you were able to take time out of your busy schedule this evening, and we appreciate your awareness of the importance of this day. Our gratitude also goes to His Excellency President Felix Chisakedi of the Democratic Republic of the Congo and Her Excellency Mrs. Marie Njeka. His Excellency's statement has surely captured the heart of this issue. Without our culture, the diversity of our languages, we will not be the beautiful and proud people of our beloved continent. We've been very grateful to have Ms. Juliana Olayinka, who's well known for her public work. Thank you, Juliana, for giving us your time this evening. And finally, I would like to thank the Social Committee, including the technology team at the Eritrean Embassy. This event was a success due to the support by you. On behalf of the Social Committee, and indeed on my own behalf, allow me to thank you all for joining us this evening. I hope you've all had just one more insight to the wonders of Africa this evening. Thank you and good night. Thank you so much to the Chair of the Social Committee of the African Union Group, Her Excellency Linda Scott, Namibian High Commissioner to the United Kingdom and Northern Ireland. Your Excellencies, distinguished representatives, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me, Juliana Olayinka, and our high-profile guests to celebrate Virtual Africa Day 2021. Thank you to the entire team here at the Embassy Media Studios. It was an honour to host you all. This is the end of our event. Stay safe and good night to you.